Excellent. All right. Well, look, officially welcome to our uh, webinar. It's our free access live in market analysis webinar. My name is Sam Evans. I am a market specialist for Pinnacle Institute. Do one of these month typically myself or Sam Sidon does one of these sessions. And uh, we like to kind of give you a little bit of an insight. You wonderful FX street people, members or not, to see a little bit about who we are, what we do. And uh, some days we'll do some specialist subjects. Some days we'll just do some live market analysis. Uh, today is a live market analysis. Before I begin, uh, I want to just remind you, and I'll do this at the end, we do have workshops that you can attend, free workshops with our team. It's coming Saturday, April 1st. We have a workshop coming at 10 a.m., then next Wednesday, April 5th, and then the following all at 10, 11, and 10. I'll show you those again towards the end if you don't catch that. Highly recommend if you do like what you see in this webinar, um, you will uh, give that a shot so um and see so it's a live market analysis um okay adrian i know you're in it are you in that trade still just showing you a little bit of a trade actually a couple of guys in the room right now are actually members of pinnacle institute and have kindly joined me on this session here right now we were just actually got short on the market uh on 4086 to 4090 on the s p we're currently short on the market and I believe our first target was at 4076. The low of that is 4076.25. We're hoping for it to get a little bit lower down. But you guys on that, I know a couple of you guys from the room are in here. And you might be thinking, okay, well, market gapped up today. Why did you guys get short? And very simply, it's because, you know, this is a market that's hitting major areas of supply right now that we're going to talk about on the S&P. And we're in a very interesting spot right now on the market. Um... We opened up into a lovely little supply area right here where there was a gap and there's another one above it as well. And that area told us there's your first target hit. Happy days. I think we've got happy days on that. And why? Because we're looking for supply demand imbalance. We're not worried about news. We're not worried about any of those things on here. NASDAQ is also the same. We're just waiting for the NASDAQ to break through its lows on here. But part of the reason why is, you know, right now we're getting some signals that there's some really key areas coming up on the broad market. And it's been like this for a while. I wanted to quickly show you that. Literally, I've just come off of a session. You're seeing the charts that I actually use when I teach the sessions twice a week on those open sessions. But I want to go over to these charts. And I want to look at a variety of different markets right now because we're in a very news-hungry market. And one of the things I love about using Pinnacle Method, supply and demand, and all of that, is that what it allows us to do is be very, very objective about the markets. And, and when I talk about that, you know, objectivity as such, um, you know, right now, if we take a look at what's going on um, in the world, you know, this market, this is Forex Factory's website. This market is very hungry for news right now. We had GDP figures come out at 8.30 this morning, Eastern time. The figures were slightly lower than anticipated. The unemployment claims were slightly higher than anticipated. The final GDP was the same, and the market gapped up. And you might ask yourself a question. You go back up to this ES and go, why, why did the market gap up? <laughs> right? Let's go look at this on a, on, a, on a daily chart here, and you can see it. We gapped up, right? And I'm going to go full screen on here. And you can see it, there's the gap up. I put this chart. This is the ES. This is the S&P 500 futures. Um, you know, well, why did it gap up? You know, the news wasn't good or any of that kind of stuff. Who cares is my simple response to that. It doesn't care. It doesn't matter about the news. What it matters, what matters the most about this is the key areas of supply and demand. Now, this gapped up. I've, I've cut some of the data out of here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and put the full 24-hour chart data on here for you for just a second. Show the extended trading hours so you can see it. And there you go. And here's what we did. We gapped up. into a pretty important supply zone. And this is a key area right now. And if you look at this market, if you've been trading lately and you've been struggling with the market, struggling with, you know, consistency in the market and finding it really difficult as a small time frame trader, uh, I'm going to just remove the volume so you've got a nice clean chart on there. Then I'm not surprised because it's not really been a clean market. If you look since where we were late, 
2022 to where we are right now. Where are we at? Down, up, down, up. Here's basically, it's the end of Q1 this week. And Q1 has done nothing. All right. And it's a dicey market right now. There's no real clear direction on the market of what it's doing. So never has there been a better time to just trust our levels. And anybody who's been messaging me lately and talking to me lately and been saying, hey, you know what, I'm struggling trading. I'm like, well, what kind of trading are you doing? And the first thing they'll say to me is, well, I'm swing trading. I'm like, well, there's not a lot of good swing trades out there because the market is pretty directionless. The second thing they'll say is, oh, well, my day trading is even harder. And I'm like, well, that's because you've got a bias. Like, literally every day you go to the market, you've got to let your biases go. You've got to like walk away from your biases. You've got to say, hey, I don't have a bias. I'm going to trade what's in front of me. Does everybody understand that? Everybody make, does that make sense, guys, about how dangerous a bias can be in this world, especially in these current markets, right? And, um, you know, right now, I've always said the best thing to do is to trade what's in front of you. And when I look at these markets on the S&P right now, just take a look. Come on, let's get some interaction going on here. Let's add a little bit more space. Let's look at this here, just this section of the market here, right? That's going back almost a year. This is showing you basically from late April to today. So about 11 months of trading activity. Look at that chart and tell me what the trend is while I have a sip of coffee. Tell me what the trend is on that. Right? Sideways. Good job, Adrian. No, there is no trend. It's a sideways market. And there have been peer have there been periods of trending? Yeah. We had a pretty strong trend here. 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 But you know what? Overall, markets don't trend as much as you think they trend. Very little. In fact, you easily hit that 75 target now on that S P. You guys in the room who are in my trading room this morning. That's easily hit. So the point I'm trying to make, right, is that why I am a big fan of supply and demand is because it doesn't really matter about things like trend when you've got a system of looking the mar at the market objectively. Now, don't get me wrong. Trend does matter, right? Your higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, and all that good stuff. I mean, it, it, it has a part. It plays a part. It has a role. I, I'm not denying that in any way, shape, or form. What I'm saying, though, um, is that in your style of trading, as long as you understand where the key imbalances are likely to be and you trade between those areas, does it matter about capturing the big moves? Because you could be a trading hero and say, well, I capture one massive move from here to here, you know, a, period, a year, and then the rest of the time I get stopped out. So it doesn't really matter, does it? So the point I'm trying to make is trade what's in front of you. And why I bring that up right now is I've got to trade what's in front of me. And what's in front of me, guys, is a very challenging market right now. And this is why I wanted to look at the S&P. Okay. I'm going to look at the S&P here and uh, draw some lines on here for you. Let's just get rid of that. All right. So, again, I'm out on a monthly chart right now. If anyone's tuning into this, this webinar right now, listening to this as the recording or the live, they're like, give me trades, give me trade ideas. Well, this is a live market analysis session. And part of this live market analysis is looking at what is in front of us. And so I look at this market here. And since this period here, which was the start of 2022, we made lower high, a lower low, we made a lower high, we made a lower, lower low, we made another lower high, we made another lower low. And we've made to me, still another lower high here. Have we done taken out these lows? No, we haven't. And I don't know if we're going to yet. But even that's irrelevant right now. And you know why that's irrelevant? Because of what I'm seeing there. What am I seeing there? What I'm seeing there is these are monthly charts. There it is monthly. And what I'm seeing is one, two, three, four, and we're about to get a fifth month potentially here, a fifth month of sideways action. This market is in flux. This is a market waiting 
for something big to happen. There is no commitment on the upside. There is no commitment on the downside. Now, I regard myself as a technical price action trader. I regard the members of Pinnacle Institute as technical price action traders. But fundamentals do play a part in all of this. And from a fundamental perspective, friends, from a fundamental perspective, there is very, very little going on. There's very little fundamentals going on right now. There are none, really, to be driving this market in any real way, shape, or form. And that's the biggest challenge that a lot of people are having right now, is there are no fundamentals at stake. Now, fundamentals won't help you time the market. Price action will help you time the market. But you need something big, and the world is waiting. We had the Silicon Valley Bank crisis. We had, you know, problems at Credit Suisse being bailed out, and all these different things. So there's obviously under the surface some serious things going on. Do we, the regular people, know about what's going on? No. Do the insiders know in governments? Absolutely they do. You know, these are all things that are going on right now. But no one's really knowing. What should I say? No one really understands what that impact is looking like on the bigger picture right now. And I think, guys, that the current price action, the price action we're seeing in the market right now is reflective of that. Does this make sense? Current price action is reflective of the lack of news and is reflective of the fact that the market's hungry for news. Does everybody understand that? Yeah? We're clear on that? So I feel like we're waiting for something pretty big to happen. So I'm not saying, I'm not going on the record saying that fundamentals drive my decisions. What fundamentals do is they drive really, really long-term outlooks. So right now, until we get some real fundamentals come into play, you're not going to probably see any real moves going on. Until we know more about what's going on in the banking crisis, until we understand a lot of these things, you're probably just not going to see much else. Okay? Right? Any questions? All making sense so far? All right, so let's look for the key levels then. So right now, the key levels are, we've got to play out some key levels on here and look at basically where we're at. So directionally, I mean, like I said, you know, right now, I think the weekly chart is very clear. This is a key level here. This is a very important supply zone. 42,220 to 43,27 is a pretty important area. This low here did create this low here that went on to make a new high here. I don't think this is the greatest level in the world, but this is what's controlling right now. These are my two key areas that I've got that I'm looking at personally and which are controlling current price. So really, what do you see is, a, is an important kind of number in the middle of all of this? Here, I'll zoom in and show you. Look, this number here, 4,000. This is a very important number in the middle of all of this. And that becomes in itself, that 4,000, like an equilibrium point right here, which is pretty much equilibrium point. So we're going to get these flirtations likely above and below, above and below. And that is literally what we've been doing since last summer. Can you believe that, guys? Look, that was that high Whew. last summer. Isn't that crazy? I mean, how long that's been going on for? So now there are some little levels within here. I would also say that, you know, what's a little, I'm a little bit mindful of is this as well. Immediately, this is, stopping me from getting really really bullish right now there's two levels on top of one another there's level a and there's level b a and b okay i wouldn't say b is the strongest area in the world but we did because we didn't take out these lows here we didn't take out those lows there which i like to have seen but still, 
this is like a double wall of supply that's going to cause a lot of problems for this market, I feel. And every time we come here, we're getting some serious rejection from that particular area as well. So these are two areas. I would be very mindful about getting too aggressive in the buying zones in this region of supply right here. I would say that, you know, the biggest test, though, however, is the market is 420. So if you now drill this down to a daily chart, for you guys who like those longer term outlooks and longer term plays, you can start to see where this is all at right now. And it's not pretty. It's not a really pretty, it's not a pretty scenario here as well. This is a fair value zone here. There's chop here. So again, if we can push and show some strength on here, we've got to get above 4,100. 4,150 would be your first target if we can break higher on here. And there are some nice little short-term levels that we could be looking for pullbacks to for bounces and so on. See, what I would like to do is if I see this market go higher right now, I want to be buying pullbacks on it. I don't want to be buying into this area of supply. Yet right now, I have to be short. You know, right now, it's a short setup. You know, as you can see, that zone on the 24-hour chart, there it is. There's that short setup right now. Then we've got the room to go a little bit higher, but only up to about 150. And then I expect, even if we show, and, and I think that's the simple analysis on all of this is going back to the weekly charts. The real simple analysis on all of this, guys, is that I'm not that excited if we get back up here again. I'm not that excited. If we get back up here again, I'm just expecting we're going to go there, here again. Right? So until this market, let's really even remove this area here. Let's remove this middle area here. Let's really just look at it for what it is. This market's trapped in a range right now. This market's trapped in a range right now. I'll happily go and look at the NASDAQ for you as well now. So here's the thing, though, to remember before I look at the NASDAQ. This S&P 500, this is the big boy. This is the market. This is the king. You know, this is the big, the, the, the big player, right? This is the one. Whatever that's doing... Everything's doing right. And so what we need to understand is that, you know, this is a driving force behind it all. There are some subtle clues that we can also look at on markets like the Russell as well. If we have time, I'll look at the Russell. I'll pop this up for you as well, which is, you know, its own animal too. You know, and we can look at the, the Russell in just a second and I'll remove all those lines on that too. And a Russell can be a little bit of a tell. The Russell can be a little bit of a tell as well. But let's go take a look at the NASDAQ. So first, before I look at the NASDAQ, S&P, my outlook on the S&P will drive the outlook on the pink. I expect basically more, um, I expect more of the same. I expect more chop. Short bursts up, short bursts down, strong days up, strong days down, but no clear market direction until we've taken out this area of supply here all this area of demand here. I, I just don't see much else going on. Um, it's so be very mindful. If you're a day trader, you'd be buying pullbacks after decent pullbacks. If you're a, a short term trader, you'll be having to, to sell rallies. Let's go look at the NASDAQ. OK, now that NASDAQ was down pretty hard so far off of these highs. It was down 24%. Let's clear the drawing set off and start from scratch and see if it looks much different. Now, the NASDAQ suffered a lot more, I feel, than the uh, the, the S&P did. But let's just look at the immediate action. And it's not really that different. I mean, if you go, again, go back about a year or so, which is, oh, that. Again, we're still seeing pretty choppy market conditions, aren't we? You know, we are seeing pretty choppy market conditions. So, again, price is trapped between some key levels. Now, immediately, one would look at this area here. And, and again, I think the NASDAQ's a little more interesting to me. Because the NASDAQ, there are two areas. There's an area here. And there's an area here. And these are two pretty strong areas to me that need our consideration. And what's interesting about these, this is where, from here, this point is where the last big market push happened. 
So you extend these areas back and they're kind of like in a significant area, you know, because this was a big point when 14,000 here got taken out. We finally rocked and rolled up to nearly 17,000, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Quite way off the highs, right? But these are the two areas that you've got that are in play right now. And on the downside, this is the area I'm looking at here. And again, this is a weekly chart. These are the key areas. And they, to me, this is way more useful you getting a good outlook on here than because this will dictate a lot of things. We're going to have a nice little push higher on here up to about the 13, 13228 without a doubt, make a new high this week, grind higher, happy days, this market's all like, you know, good in that regard. Um, but you can see on here that we've got these these same lows, and I think these were the lows that were the taken out, and then uh, this area here was really a reaction to, to, to this down here, so look. So now that shows you, it's quite a mirror of one of itself, isn't it? This is like a mirror. Two supply areas above, two demand areas below. And so there's, again, we're not, we're getting close to those extremes. And people said, oh, the NASDAQ's been looking so strong. Well, that's because the NASDAQ was on its knees, <laughs> right? Beforehand, the NASDAQ was on its knees, which is why it had you know, such a nasty, uh, a nasty pullback. Uh, it's had a strong pullback because the further something comes down, the more powerful the, the you know the return will be the, the 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 reaction the bounce back to the upside in that regard. So thirteen two two eight thirteen seven four zero thirteen eight seven six thirteen two seven seven. So again, I'm going to find it very very difficult to be wanting to get too bullish on this market when we're hitting these two supply areas. For now, pullbacks. What I don't like is these three weeks here. See these three weeks here. They've got a lot of room back to go to the downside. But you've also got plenty of room to the upside on there as well. So on the NQ, I would remain bullish at a guesstimate up to around maybe 13,475, 13,500. But I'd be very mindful that for this upward momentum to continue, guys, zoom in on the daily charts, you really look, we've had a lot of gaps. Gap up, gap up, gap up. When you keep getting gap ups like that, it's going to exec eventually exhaust itself. And even right now, right this moment in time, you're in a supply zone. And on top of that supply zone, guess what you have? Another supply zone. <laughs> so this is like a car speeding along at pace and it's about to hit a brick wall. So even right now, I'm not a willing buyer up here, not in this. And then when I get a little bit higher, guess what? I got another area to deal with at 13.99 and then another area to deal with. So the point I'm trying to make is this, and let's keep it very simple. There, it's okay to buy pullbacks to demand areas because as we said right at the start of the mar of this session, at Pinnacle, we're not that bothered about trend. What we're bothered about is profit margin. Do you understand? There's a difference. I care about profit margin. Markets go up, markets go down. Markets go up, markets go down every single day, right? I've, I personally had days where the market's been going up all day and I've actually made some money on the downside. I've had markets where the market's going up, down all day and I've made some market money on the upside for getting bounces. Because if you're using supply and demand objectively and effectively and trying to get qualify good zones and get as far away from the current price as possible and get out onto the fringes as I call them, there's always going to be a profit margin. And that's one of the things that we specialize in. And it makes it life so much easier because you start to lose your bias of, oh, well, you know, the market's got upside momentum or downside momentum and yada, yada, yada. Y you lose that because you end up saying, well, all I need is a quality area of supply or a quality area of demand. And if I get those areas, I can trade around them. You know, because to try and pick long term direction at the moment is a very, very, very difficult thing. So the best thing you can do is use on these broad markets. These larger time frame areas. OK. You can use these larger time frame areas. And. 
lean on those. Does that make sense, guys? Does that make sense? Now, if you know, in other sessions that we've done together, we've also talked a lot about the dollar index, right? And again, I'm not finding the dollar index to be the most powerful tool either right now. I mean, it's okay. But we talked about this level before on the dollar index right here. You see this? This big monthly area that we reacted from and then we're back in again. Mark, this dollar index is all over the place at the moment. It's not offering any real clarity. But that's fine. Does it need to? Mm, not really. All it needs to do is just show us enough. And again, before this dollar can go any lower, we got to take out this weekly area. Right? The rally base rally between 101 and 99.81. Until we close below this 101 area, probably going to hold those at that area on the dollar index. But think about this. What have we got above this area here? Lots of room. What have we got below this area? Lots of room. If you look at the extreme areas of supply and demand, you wonder why is the dollar index so challenging right now? Well, here's a clue. Extreme high, extreme low. Where are we? We're in the middle. We're in the middle. And thinking about that for just a second as well, is if you go back to that S&P and you look at this again from another perspective, look at this. This is going to be an interesting thing for you to look at. This is the COVID rally. See here? This low, that's the COVID rally. This is the absolute high. You basically retrace 50% of the move on here. You pull back and get back half those gains. And now, what's really interesting, right, is you take this new area and you go from here to here and you've retraced 50% of that move. <laughs> right? Sometimes you've got to do a little bit of analysis and you've got to look and say, oh, wow, look. So from here to here, we've retraced half that move and we're indecisive. So are we now shifting to do this, to do that, right? But on the other side of it, you go from here to here. And it could be that we're doing this to pull back to here to go higher. Well, you know what that's going to take to decide? That is going to take someone to make a decision. And while we do not focus on fundamentals and news for timing the market, and I suggest none of you use do that, fundamentals do drive overall super long-term trends. And what am I talking about? Yearly trends, two-year, like five-year trends, cycles, right? The average bull market's about six, seven years, right? So if you're looking for like real action, you know, bears typically two to three years, bull markets seven plus, right? We're waiting right now. We're not in a major fundamental trend right now of any kind because we're not in a bull market and we're not really in a bear market. Why? Because there's no major economic news. We're on the precipice of something really big happening that's going to define, that's going to define where we go in the next five to seven years. You understand? And that's what's going to happen. We're going to get that. That's going to define that moving forward. Well, the market's still waiting for that information, friends. And you can see it's waiting for the information by looking at supply and demand and playing those supply and demand areas. Now, when the news finally makes its mind up, when this finally happens and we break higher, we break lower, guess what? There'll be some underlying fundamentals and there'll be new demand zones to form that we can go long on, new supply zones. But right now, you've got to work with what you're given. If you're finding it hard, guess what? A lot of people are. So right now, 
the moral of the story is whether you're trading the Nasdaq, whether you're trading the ES, whether you're trading the dollar, whether you're trading any of these things, treat it like a range. You got to treat it like a range, guys. Um, this is how it has to be. And, you know, try not to get too caught up on anything and use the supply and demand more effectively. Now, how to use that supply and demand more effectively? Come to one of our workshops. Explain a lot more about that. You know, we've got an amazing team of people who do that, right? Uh, every single day. But, you know, it's, it's very simple in the respect that when you start really focusing on, you know, the zones and the areas over everything else, it just gets a little bit easier. Don't have to worry so much about the news, right? You don't have to worry about any of them. I'm going to clear all these drawings. I'm just looking at gold right now. Gold can often be a tell of where we were at. Like gold. I'm just looking at showing you gold right now here, yeah? Gold was pretty interesting. We pull back to this area. There's no supply on gold. What does the chart tell us here? There's no supply on gold, but we pull back to a demand area. We rallied, we pulled back, we hit demand, we held demand, we're probably going to close a month higher. What does that mean we should be doing on gold right now? Probably just staying bullish. Staying bullish, looking at these key areas on gold. That's price action telling me. There's no fundamentals that are going to change that outlook on gold right now. We're flirting with $2,000. Could we get $2,500 gold? Who knows? If the market goes to hell in a handbasket, absolutely. I don't need fundamentals to tell me. I'll trade the levels for short-term outlooks, and I'll always trade the levels for long-term outlooks. But for long-term outlooks, I need fundamentals to go with that. And I haven't got any fundamentals to go with that right now. There is nothing out there. We just know the world's in a very, very shaky place with war on the horizon. And please God that we don't go to full war or any of that kind of stuff. But, you know, gold is a reflection, I feel, right now of the market in turmoil, the market nervous, which is why it's rallying. You know, <laughs> you look at treasuries. There are some fundamentals on treasuries. Interest rates are not going, interest rates are not going lower, uh, any, any higher, um, any lower, anytime soon. We've been in an amazingly long-term bull market on these. And, you know, the inverse relationship is that when interest rates go up, the price of bonds go down. Well, guess what? Fed put interest rates up again. What's happened? Prices of bonds have gone down. So, you know, again, you look at these markets and you look at these weekly charts of bonds right now. And uh, it's pretty simple, isn't it? We never even closed above this supply area. We've got room to go. What are bonds doing? Bonds are reflective of the market. What do you see when you really look at this? We've got zones on top of zones on top of zones. And right now, the price is just showing me we're in a range. Because they're not aggressively raising rates now. They've slowed down a little bit. But we know full well, Fed's going to have to put rates up. Central banks, Bank of England, all that's going to have to put rates up. So it's probably going to break down even lower. Okay? But again, right now, until we break out of this current range, this is all we're going to have. So we lean on the higher time frame levels. And guys, if you lean on the higher time frame levels, you're going to be in good shape. So I hope that was useful. Um, gives you some of the key market levels. It's a difficult market right now. It's not a particularly easy market out there. But that gives you my outlook. Treat the thing as a range until uh, otherwise. If you want to know more about specifically how do I, you know, find my levels and what to look for, I suggest you come to one of these three workshops coming up. We hold them every Saturday and every Wednesday. Go on to pinnacleinstitute.com, upcoming events, register, they're for free. They'll talk to you all about our advanced Elevate program, which is an awesome, very affordable um, um, market immersion week, and maybe you'll end up becoming a member. So I hope that helps. For those of you who bothered to come here live, thank you for being here live and taking your time out of your day. Um, for those of you who are looking at the recording, Thank you for taking the time to listen to the recording. My name's Sam Evans. I'm one of the market specialists for Pinnacle Institute. I wish you all a very safe and happy rest of the trading month. It does end tomorrow. And I wish you a very successful Q2 coming up as well. FX Street, as always, thanks for having me. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.